Hello everyone, we are Aline and Vincent. We are, we'll be talking to you about adding a personalization touch to uh, your search engine. So to introduce ourselves, we are a lot of people here, they're all in the back here. Uh, we were at Berlin Best Worlds before. We are Adeline. Uh, the company was not named after me, like, I have to precise. Uh, <laughs> We are experts in search technologies. We do uh, integration of Elasticsearch, Solar, any search engine. Uh, we provide consulting services and we are also editors of a solution, a platform named uh, A2, uh, which is well a platform for uh, e-commerce uh, specifics for enterprise search. So we will ask ourselves questions about personalization. First of all, what it is, uh, why we need it, uh, the challenges around it, and then uh, how we can add easily some uh, personalization steps in a search engine with an example. So to beginning, uh, what is it? Personalized search refers to web search experiences that I tell it specifically to an individual interest by incorporating information about the individual beyond the specific query provided. Meaning it's not exactly something that you do yourself, you know, to pimp it, uh, pimp your experience. It's more that, um, uh, well, you, you, you provide um, something that is adapted to someone. Um, yeah, here, sometimes we talk about profiling as well, uh, just to make a difference. Profiling is more about like personas. You, you take like big, big groups of users by gender, by GOIP or by age group. And some, sometimes you can go to a, a more granularity and looking at, at history of logs and that's more what we will look uh, in this presentation. Uh, in search personalization, you can do personalization at many places. Uh, it's shown here. So usually you, you think about uh, how you will uh, rank your result set, but you can do personalization in the auto completion as well. In the filtering, you can even do some alerting based on uh, personalization. Um, and as an example of Google doing uh, personalization for auto completion, uh, if you type 12 Angry Men and you look for information about this movie, uh, depending if it's in, in the same session or not, if you try to look for the, for the actor after you, are, you have looked for, for this movie, uh, if you type uh, H-E-N, you will have like immediately a uh, proposition about Henry Fonda, which is the main actor of the movie. Uh, and if you're not in the same session, you will still have some personalization because here we have like some geo IP profiling, which will propose me something which are typically French, like a French king or a French uh, politician. Uh, yes. So this is, well, the question we can ask ourselves about is, is it a good or bad thing? And why do we like it so much? Um, obviously, the first thing is that uh, it brings more money to businesses. Uh, so you have here some, some figures uh, about how much it raises revenue and uh, how the, the pricing personalization can improve profits. Um, and, and all the communication is much better when you, when you personalize it. So this is one... I mean, the main, the main interest into personalization. Um, also, what is good is that you can really have um, a better options when you're searching for something. This is why we users like it as well. Uh, as you can see, this is like a, um, um, the, the re search results are displayed here in green and, and then the, the red items is what is interesting for me. Without search, I cannot find what I need. Uh, with search, we prove it very much, of course, uh, but with personalized, personalized search, we are really uh, first 
on, on the set of what we bring. We bring less results, but they are all very interesting for, for us. Also, um, what is important is that the, the, the ranking of the results are, are, is very, very better. And uh, we can see on the first page what really we, we, we need to see. It's especially important in big data where you have marketplace and even with search, even with a good search engine, we will, you will have a lot of results for your, your, your search query and search personalization can uh, give you quicker access to your, to your personal results. And um, usually when you talk about personalization, you, you think as well about disambiguation. For instance, if you're a marketplace and you type cream, you have like many type of cream. You have like people who, who will buy more food products in your marketplace. They will probably expect some, some food. If they are more in the beauty area, they will look for cream for your skin. And if they are like fan of music, maybe they expect you to come up with the, with the group of the 70s. <laughs> and um, more generally, uh, it has been shown by some papers that personalization work more if you have like uh, spread results, which means that if you take all users and you see that they, they click a lot on some items and not on other ones, uh, it, personalization will not work well. It, you, you have to improve the relevancy of your search engine, but probably not by doing some personalization. But you have, if you have some spread results, like everybody is clicking a bit everywhere, there you, you can have some improvement by doing some personalization. But. But. <laughs> um, no, well, uh, we, 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 can, we could see that it's very important to, to do it. So. Let's do it. There are many set challenges that we will see. Um, the third, the, the third uh, thing is from Google themselves, um, saying that when you personalize something on Google, it's absolutely difficult or impossible when you don't have any context. There is so much context when you do a query on Google. Um, uh, so many different contexts, I mean, uh, that it's very complicated to, to link searches uh, one to another. Uh, you can in the same day, you know, um, speak of many things with, with anyone, and then you, you are searching for, for cream, and the, the second after uh, for, uh, um, I don't know, where to go somewhere, and then about a restaurant, and then about uh, maybe, uh, you know, um, wear, so something to wear, you know. So it's very, very different. And Google themselves stepped back uh, from a from lot of personalized search in the search engine. Yeah, it, it's true for Google because they have like a very broad context. When you go on Google, you can do many things, even addition if you want. So you can do pretty much everything, but in, this, in an e-business, you're probably, a, 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 a lead, the, the context is smaller. So it's probably personalization will probably work a little bit more. And if you have an e-commerce on a special kind of product, it will probably work even better. Or at least uh, this argument against uh, personalization will not be as strong uh, for e-commerce. Then he will listed uh, some, some of the complexity behind uh, personalized search. We will afterwards see how we can address everyone, everything. Uh, the first part is that you need very qualitative data. Uh, then uh, you you need to know how much personalization you need to to put in the like uh, how much salt you want to put in your in your formula in your query uh, testing measuring and getting the you know getting feedback about how it works how it's going is very difficult um, you have the same problems as you have when you use recommender systems. Uh, things like it's it's well you, you when you do a cold start you need data before that uh, you need to remove popular products you also need um, to be careful of uh, the the bubble thing uh, so that then you can't see any interesting results that may interest you uh, and to finish uh, when you use a user account it can be shared uh, through different people and uh, so personalization with just not work, for example. 
And then, of course, uh, you have the big question of privacy, uh, which is most, what most people think about in terms of program with personalization. And you have a study here which shown that 27%, which is a big number of people, find such personalization to be too invasive. And the main reason for that is that they feel uncomfortable because they, they don't know exactly how the, how the data came from uh, in the formula and who gave them this uh, data. And here I have um, uh, an example um, of personalization in advertisement, and they kind of push the boundary for privacy. They seem to have no boundaries for, for privacy at all. And uh, I had these two friends who were playing a game of dice together, and uh, they didn't remember the rules. And one of them looked at the, at the rules on his phone, and the other one kept his phone closed. Even though the next day, the second one, with the one who kept his phone closed, when he opened his browser, he got some advertisement for Dices. And it's, that's where the privacy kind of, uh, I guess, in search personalization can break the long-term relationship with your brand. And even if you improve your search engine, you will have people who will leave your search engine and not use it anymore. So, and you will say, okay, my search engine is working much better, but some people will, will have left it. A bit like we could think about, you know, people using Amazon, they think you have good price, you have good stock, it's very uh, practical, but some people don't use it because they, for the ontologic reason, it's, it's, it'd be the same kind of problem. Um, and then you have as well technical reason that for of difficulties for storing personal data. First, it can be expensive. It has been shown that it's um, by some paper that it's it works better if you have a long history. But obviously, long history comes with uh, cost because storing personal data will be quite costly in that case. And it, and as well, the more history you you store, the more privacy issue you have. And I guess on that subject solution will be transparency, honesty, always use your own data so that people feel comfortable with the personalization you use. And maybe give the possibility to have like some kind of a hybrid search where they can choose easily to, to have a standard search and not a personalized search. Yeah, just to add maybe something uh, quickly. We are not advertising companies uh, neither. We don't have to blame ourselves to, to add in personalization in a search engine. You know, the, the goal behind is really to be as accurate as possible. So I, I would maybe uh, say don't blame ourselves for that. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah, so now we'll see, uh, get big, deeper technically to see how, I don't know, organization, team organization level, and technically we, we can address personalization. So again, begin with a, a quote. Um, so basically any organization that designs any system uh, will produce a design whose structure is exactly the copy of the organization communication structure is Con Conway's law, I don't know. Um, it's a bit the same uh, when you talk about processing uh, personal data and put it in the search engine. Um, so yeah, often data scientists, scientists and search engineers are separate teams with separate organizations, separate behavior, and they meet sometimes. Um, and of course, um, as we understood, personalized search is somewhere between. Um, it can be, well, it can move uh, around, but the idea would be to be at the, the exact center. Um, our goal is that um, a good organization would look some way like this. Um, well, if there are <laughs> data, data scientists in the room would maybe prefer to be here, you know, depends on the, on the conference we, we, we switch. <laughs> We, we, we may switch the, 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 the character here, but the idea was be really to be together and try to, to see the future together. Yeah, no. Yeah. Oh, okay. uh, and yeah, when you personalize, you have like two main techniques, which will be like to modify your, if you're using like Elasticsearch or Solar or Listen, you will uh, 
change the formula of your of your query and put some additional boost in your query or some filtering uh, or you have like the re-ranking top end results with machine learning um so yes in, in both cases you are you need to 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 collect the data which is uh, one of the hard part of uh, personalization or even machine learning uh, so you have always uh, many way of doing this it's a straight question to customer you, you will have demographic information if they subscribe to your website obviously and the goip by default and then you will track all the customer behavior like search term add to cart click on result etc like in, like in recommender systems, you will do some techniques very uh, used or like collab collaborative filtering. You have your user and they have like some, um, not affinity, but they, uh, they have some interaction. And from them, you, you, will, uh, you will infer some affinity between items and between user and items. And you can build your formula with this data. And here is a, it's an example uh, of uh, what you can do to modify your elastic search query. Very simple. Uh, here you have an item, which is probably uh, a music uh, item, probably some hardcore hard rock, uh, hard rock uh, music. Well, we're, and, we're in Berlin, so it may be hardcore. Yeah, maybe. And. And here is a query. You will have your initial query here and you will just do some boosting. Here you will do some applicative uh, additional filtering based on the people, the, the person who will use your, your, your search engine. And this guy is a vegan and a hard work fan. And obviously this kind of item will be pushed up. And in a memory ranking, you will create a model, but then you will add user features in addition to your product features, which we could, we could call it like some personalized learning to rank. Here I put some of the history of uh, all the algorithms which have been used in uh, learning to rank. And, and you re-rank the top end results. Uh, and there will be a trade-off usually between efficiency and relevancy and the size of uh, the top end results that you will re-rank. And as well as a number of features or the user features that you will use uh, to, to improve your, your search engine. And eventually how to test it's um, if testing a search engine is hard. Uh, testing a personalized search engine is very hard because you're not testing one uh, search engine, but you're testing like a thousand search engine for other. Uh, so a B test seems to be kind of crucial if you want to 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 do some personalized search. Uh, and another way can be to replace session with uh, a guy from a comp company and see if, if everything seems logic based uh, on on the on the user he used for his test. Obviously, it, it will be harder to to do this when you do machine learning because it's more of a black box. Uh, but uh, if you are doing like some boosting, you will quickly see if, if your, your boost is logic or not. And obviously, as we saw before, you need to check that users are not leaving your site if you're doing too much personalization. So last part of this presentation will give you some, some ideas of an example we have in Adeline. We are um, working at Carrefour France as a search platform. So we provide all the search platform for Carrefour. Uh, it's 1 million users. And um, with personalization, we apply, um, well, with and without, we apply boost uh, over 30,000 products. So we will present you a very simple case of personalization. This is a MVP, a first start of uh, using data platform uh, data. Uh, for for improving search. So we get data from uh, the data team that we meet uh, now more regularly. Uh, and they, they provide us a very simple data set, which is a combination of a product for, an, for a user ID, a combination of a product and the quantity bought throughout a period of time which is, uh, I think, uh, three, the three last months. So 
This data is provided on a regular basis uh, and will help us improve the search. Uh, yeah, the 1 million user was actually the, the million user which will be connected because uh, Carrefour has more user, I think, but yeah. we are using in this uh, personalization, we personalized for 1 million user. Uh, yeah. and logged in user. Yeah. Yeah. And here, uh, it's it's an it's more it's really a baby personalization product. It's not even for every item. It's just for people who are typing something, and it will just go up the the, the because Carrefour is you know is selling food, is selling groceries, so it's a special type of e-commerce, which means that you are always buying the same kind of thing regularly. Uh, so it's a big issue for them to, for the users to have an easy access to their freq frequently bought uh, items. And here we can put, we can do some personalization on that subject, which is uh, simple. And basically what you do is, uh, by instance, you have this user who is buying milk and you know, milk come in many flavors, but they all kind of look the same. And he has a special brand here that he's buying all the time. And when he will type by, uh, when it will type milk, it will have a boost on his own uh, on his favorite bottle of milk, and it will come up. And it's quite simple uh, um, personalization, but it, it works quite well. The NPS uh, kind of uh, the NPS went up uh, with with this feature. Uh, they didn't get more money, but uh, the session time was a bit shortened because for all this uh, frequently bought product, they could have gone and we put some personalization as well when they browse the category. But sometimes people prefer to, to, to type in the search bar and this way they, they can have their frequently bought product more, more easily. And here that's uh, the situation between uh, in the organization at CAF for France, it's like, beginning of a relationship between data scientists and search engineers. They still kind of the data they gave us for the search engine, they kind of put the paper under the, the door for us and we try to incorporate in the search engine, but we still have uh, now a weekly meeting, which is a bit better than before where we were meeting them basically every six months. Uh, but they are, there is still uh, a lot of work to do in this area because they still don't understand how the search engine work. Uh, how the formula is done, they kind of give us the data and we don't know how the data is, I mean, they explain us, but we, as we see them from time to time, we don't have uh, that much uh, time to understand how they come up with this formula. And I guess that if you integrate more your teams, then we probably have some ideas to improve our search engine on that level. And we will probably have some ideas about some bias we see in the way they calculate the, the data extra. And so the ID is, and the A-B testing is really not at, it's not done in Carrefour France yet. They are doing some A-B test, but based on local uh, shops, which means that it's not real A-B test because you have a lot of bias, uh, because you have, uh, if you have different store, you, you might have different uh, way of buying things depending on where it's uh, put in France. And, uh, and all of these need to be improved, but it's, I think it's on, in the good, uh, it goes in the good, in the good way. And uh, we try to converge our maps, et cetera, and, and do more personalization. And in addition, I would say that we tried to, two years ago, we tried to put by instance something which failed, because we can talk about things, things which failed. We, we tried to put LTR in Carrefour, and we even tried to put personalized LTR in Carrefour, but it was undermanned the communication between the team was uh, most non-existent. And they, at the time, Carrefour were thinking about this as a silver bullet, which would be an easy way to fix everything without putting too much money and effort in it. Like you see that uh, many times and obviously it went nowhere, but maybe in the future we will go that way. It will. <laughs> We have no, no. We have access to the, the the platform data. We have access to algorithms, and uh, and really are looking forward to to do a lot of propositions and uh, yeah, going further. Key takeaways for this presentation: so we saw that adding individual data 
make it more relevant, obviously. Um, we do it because it's faster and less effort to find what we want and users may ask themselves, well, does this data come from? But obviously it's very, uh, very uh, accurate to, to do that for search. It's a complex challenge, that is true. Respect of privacy is a very important uh, part of it. Uh, we really need to include it in the, in the roadmap when it's about uh, personalization and talk about it, discuss it, be the most transparent uh, possible. And to finish, we do it by mixing data scientists and search engineers um, and adding data at any steps, tests, get feedback and improve that. I think it's them. Um, That's it, thank you. The end. That's a wonderful talk and a lot of insights to take away uh, from this talk. Um, we can probably take a couple of questions. We already have one. Okay. Hello, thank you for your talk. Uh, how much time it usually takes to go from non-personalized to personalized search, like for an e-commerce store? Uh, for our Carrefour um, solution, most I think the thing the the thing that took most of the time was to gather the data. So for the data team to get, you know, the most frequent items about uh, to get user IDs and then this information in an index. Once you have this, uh, I guess it's just an improvement of indexing. This is not the the, the most difficult and most long thing that we did. Um, maybe the, the teammate just behind you could, could tell you exactly what it was. <laughs> um, I, I don't have the, the days, but it's not so so much time, you know, it's not like a three months project or something. Uh, the most important part was really getting the data, uh, getting, you know, the wires within the company, the APIs, the platformization, all these gets before. Once you have this, I think it's easy to, to it's just like another data you add. Thank you. Okay, we do have... Uh, yep. uh, thank you for the talk. Um, in one section, uh, you mentioned kind of transparency of solving the problem of like giving spooky results. That's, um, maybe I missed it, but did you also add something in your display layer to actually make the people aware that, okay, you see this because like we figured this is something you bought? Or do you even uh, provide something to say, hey, uh, you can deactivate this anytime if you feel it's too spooky? Uh, no, we, in that example at the end, we didn't. But I guess that's something which needs to be done, and, and you know, it needs to be very visible, I guess. And that's a UI problem because you don't need to show too many things as well to the client to be click everywhere to too many buttons. But uh, I guess that's uh, something that I would like to personally to see, even if I don't click on it. But at least they give me the choice to do it, uh, to deactivate some personalization. Uh, but then it's as well a UI problem because you have to not make your your website too too busy with many choices. If I can add something, you know, in in a in a platform such as Carrefour, for example, front end, when you create a user ID, you you, you must like accept some terms and conditions, and this is part of it. Okay, I think uh, I know we have. Um to go for a lunch break. So I'll take one more question because we started late. Uh, hey, uh, thanks for the talk. Um, I actually have uh, one question for you. Um, so basically in e-commerce context, uh, we understand that uh, there, is a, there has to be a right balance between personalization and diversity, right? Because in e-commerce, we understand the users converge as well as diverge in their journeys. So um, what is your take on how do we create a right balance between diversity and personalization in the user journey? Um, I didn't completely understand your question. Okay, sure. Uh, so Sorry. let's say, uh, let's say uh, you're on Amazon, right? Yeah. And I have a lot of context of the user. So I understand exactly what, 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 what was his history, uh, what were the purchases. So I can personalize the experience. 
Yeah. But to what extent do I personalize the experience? Do I show him some diverse results or not? Because there is a good chance that you're searching for football. I understand the brands you're interested in, but at the same time, there's a brand that you might be interested in, but it's not in your personalization, right? So, yeah. And, and that's the echo chamber problem is that you have to, to it's that's one of the hard part of the personalization. If you don't do machine learning, because uh, then it will reshuffle with its own way and you have few, but if you incorporate, try to incorporate uh, personalization, um, I guess you have to A-B test to see, and probably it as well as to do with diversity of results and give a way to, for the user to be out of their filter bubble and not see always their personalized results, which will put them in, a, in some loop, in some echo chamber. And that's one of the difficulties of uh, personalization, which is something which is a problem as well with machine learning. When you, when you re-rank results, you can have some bias, which put you in some echo chamber, but in personalization kind of accentuate this last problem. So that, that's, that's one of the issues with uh, difficulties with it. Yeah. Sure. Thanks. Uh, I have follow-up questions, but yeah, we can take. Maybe we can discuss it with a sandwich in the hand. So we we do have a couple of more questions, but I'm not taking them right now. Even I have one, so we will probably reach them backstage. And for now, we would be dispersing for lunch. But thank you for the amazing talk, and let's um, thank you them with the big round of applause again. Thank you.